Hi everyone, so this is the, um, the first vid for lesson four of the functions pack. So we've talked about inverses already and we've mentioned a few important things that to have an inverse it has to be a one-to-one -one mapping and when I do the swap, the y equals x swap, what I'm saying is that graphically that's the same as a reflection in the line y equals x. It means I can swap my coordinates around. So say naught pi becomes pi naught on the reflected graph. Right, so we're going to do some inverse trig functions. So we've got a sine to the minus 1, cos to the minus 1, and tan to the minus 1. Some exam papers have used an alternative notation, which is arc sine, arc cos, or arc tan. And that is just your sine to the minus 1, it's just your cos to the minus 1, it's just your tan to the minus 1. It's just a different way of doing it. Right, so let's have a look at these boxes then. <clears throat> so I've got to make it one to one. And what I'm doing is I'm choosing the y values to cover, well it covers all the y values, as close to the x-axis as possible. So oh, don't get myself right confused here. I'm choosing x values that give me all the y values as close to the origin as possible. Does that make sense? So sine goes on forever and ever. But I've got that, like, I can cover all the y values from minus one to one between minus a half pi and a half pi. So the domain of the sine graph for a one-to-one -one mapping, so this is making sure it's one-to-one, -one, is minus a half pi to a half pi. And the range is minus one to one. Remember, the domain of the function is the range of the inverse. And the range of the function is the domain of the inverse because of the reflection of the line y equals x. So here, look, so here's my reflection. So if you take the sine graph, which is this one, so that coordinate there is minus pi over two comma minus one. Now that's reflected to this point, and that is now minus 1, minus pi over 2. So you can see you've switched it. The same with the, where's it gone? With this one here, which is pi over 2, comma 1. That's reflected in the line y equals x, and it becomes 1 pi by 2. There. So you can see the reflections nicely on here, and it's maintained a one-to-one -one mapping. So here is my graph of the inverse sine. So if you look, my domain is minus one-to-one, -one, which was the range, the values of the range on the original function. And my range is minus pi by two to pi by two, which if you look, were the values of the domain on the original function. So it's just all bringing it back together, what we said. Now we can do this, so that's the sine graph, and you can actually graph it, in fact, should we do it now? Right, here's my calc. So if you go into graph, make sure you're in radians, and I'm gonna do shift sine x, there. Right, so I'm gonna sort out my, um, my axes to make it a little bit easier. So I want x between minus one and one, I'm going to do minus 1.1 and 1.1, so it does it. And then I want y between minus pi by 2, so minus shift pi divide 2, and pi by 2, so shift pi divide 2. I'll do the scale as, I could do the scale as pi by 4, but I think I'll do it as pi by 2 actually. Shift pi divide 2. And hopefully it will get a nice picture. There you go. So you can graph it in your calculator doing sine minus one. Just being careful with your axes. There. I can do similar with the cos graph. So the cos graph's at the bottom. <clears throat> so I'm just covering all the y values once from minus one to one, closest to the x value, x uh, to the origin as possible. So that's giving me between naught and pi, and I've got pi by two there. These coordinates are switched, so if I've got, say, zero, one, 
that gets reflected to 1, 0. And I've got this point here, which is 0 pi by 2, gets reflected to here, which is pi by 2, 0. And the last point up here, uh, oh no, what's up there, the inverse, sorry. This point here, which is pi and minus 1, gets reflected to minus 1 and pi. And that gives me this lovely little graph which you can graph yourself on the calculator. Same idea, the domain for the function is 0 to pi, so the range on the inverse is 0 to pi. The domain, uh, sorry, the range on the function, minus 1 to 1, the domain on the inverse, minus 1 to 1. Uh, I think the next page, your next page has got the tan graph, similar idea, but you've got to be careful now because you've got asymptotes, haven't you? So this cell has got asymptotes that repeats itself every pi. I do the rotation, uh, the reflection, and it gives me the asymptotes going the other way now. So you have to be careful with these asymptotes. So we're on six minutes. I might just quickly do example one, because there's not that much in it. It's just a bit of rearranging solving. So I want to get rid of inverse tan. So I've got x is tan of pi by four. Make sure you're in radians. And that'll give me x is one. There. This one, if I take the pi over and divide by two, that's cos to the minus one of x. Uh, so, so x is cos of minus pi by 2, stick in the calculator, is 0. So last one, so if I do 2x minus 1, is sine of pi by 6. So 2x minus 1 is equal to a half, add on the 1, divide through by 2. So I'm just doing a bit of solving with them. Right, we're on seven minutes, so I'm going to stop that bit there to do the next one.